Commodore is keeping up with you. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Cause the Commodore is keeping up with you. Are you keeping up? Cause the Commodore is keeping up with you. Are you keeping up? Good evening boys and girls. And welcome back to another video. And we're taking a look at the Commodore SX64. For those of you that don't know, the SX64 is the um, portable or luggable Commodore 64. It is not the portable Commodore 64 because there was no such thing. Um, there almost was, but that's a different story. So this is the Commodore SX portable or luggable. It is a big heavy box but it has all the features and all the functions of the Commodore 64. Uh, it has no batteries so you need to plug it into the mains. Um, as you can see from the screen it is a, a white on green screen rather than the Commodore Blue. Uh, the Commodore 64 Blue rather. It has 64k of RAM, still basic 2. It is, to all intents and purposes, a Commodore 64. So I'll read you just a little bit of the brief about it. It was released in 1983. Uh, it has Commodore Basic, has the same processor, the same RAM. Uh, it utilizes a 5 inch 320 by 200 screen and it has one internal 5.5 inch, uh, yeah, inch floppy disk. Um, it was released in 83 and it cost $1,000. I can't find any UK price for it, so don't know how much it costs in the UK. I rather suspect it would be about a thousand pounds. It weighed 23 pounds, which is about 10 kilograms. It has a five inch screen, detachable keyboard, um, one five and a quarter inch disc. What did I say? Five and a half. Five and a quarter inch disc, um, and it was available from January. Uh, it only the SX64 has one 175 a 170 kilobyte disk and a cartridge port on top. Um, it was described as a luggable by Commodore. It is the first ever color portable computer in the world. Uh, all other machines were black and white or monochrome at this time. None were color. They said a color screen was too expensive and too difficult to integrate into a small platform. But Commodore did it. Um, a 23 pound suitcase sized um, luggable computer. Didn't have a battery, had to be plugged into the AC outlet. Yep. Almost fully compatible with the C64. The only difference is that this does not have a cassette port, it has one disk drive. Uh, if you have one of the later versions, um, they do have an uprated power pack and you can run two disk drives but initially they only had one and the other drawer was for storage of diskettes um, that's about it really so what is it like well I think it's great it's a superb machine it's incredibly heavy but it has a superbly strong well made handle I've taken the end caps off mine to tighten them up and put the end caps back on but I do have them uh, it comes with a detachable keyboard. Mine has the incorrect or an incorrect cable, but it works. Um, so I'm just going to run. I'm going to run a radio program, believe it or not, that will capture capture that will uh, tune into FM radio signals and play a little bit of something non-copyright music. I hope YouTube. So um, you'll see on the screen. I'm capturing this at the moment. So let's see, I'll pop a disc in, there we go, this is all in real time, L seems a little bit sticky, uh, I think it's F, M, R, D, O, what does that say, that doesn't say F, M, radio, F M radio. That's better. 
searching. It's quite a small program. It has mono, stereo, scan, volume buttons, and it does have eight or nine pre-programmable configuration settings. I did. I thought I had set some channels up, um, but it says there aren't any, so I can't have done. So run. There we go, it's making a noise, I don't know if you can hear it. Um, bracket is search. If it starts playing music, I'll have to speed it on a bit, because um, YouTube don't like music. Where's the antenna? Oh, it's fallen down. Move the antenna, the aerial. I do have some desktop speakers that are plugged into the little module at the back that uh, that is the FM radio. But the distortion was terrible. He was picking up so much noise, probably from the SX64. He never did it with the 64 that I remember. So I've just popped some headphones in and turned the volume up full. Not the best solution, but it works. Well, there you go. Let's see what else we've got. I'm sure that sounds dreadful. But it does sound beautifully clear through the headphones. Well, once you're tuned in, anyway. This is just me clowning about. I will, um, I will do another a review of the um, the module thing I, I made a long time ago. I'll turn that down. In fact, we'll mute it. Shut up. Um, so that's that. In fact, I'm going to. Shall I turn it off? No, it will stop the capture. Um, is there a reset button on this? I think there's just for the drive, isn't there? Yeah. There's no machine reset. I thought on it. In fact, I'm going to. I might lose some. Um, no, I can't, can I? Can I? I shouldn't really. No, I'll bugger it, I will. Pop a cartridge in the top. So now this is a homemade cartridge. Don't actually know what it does. Well, that reboots. Might be nothing on the cartridge now. I've said that, but it gives me a handy reset switch. But that is the FM or an FM radio. So the SX64 uh, had a big sticker on it once. It's a particularly heavy piece of kit, but the screen is super bright. It is legible. You can read it, and it's not really headache inducing. Almost, but not quite. It doesn't make you want to jump off a bridge. Um, I have had all this in bits. It does suffer from a little bit of board creep. Unlike the Commodore 64, which is a flat motherboard or PCB. Uh, the SX is built upon cards that plug into each other. Um, so you have quite a big power pack at the back. You have a couple of long cards 
one's got the video information one's got the cartridge port on it another one's got the drivers for the TV another one's got the um, controller card for the disk drive now what happens is the cards are all held together on pins and as it's vibrated and rattled about the pins pop out a bit and the picture will go funny the disk drive will stop working and all those fun things when I bought this it did have a few issues I don't remember I think I changed the ULA because it was corrupting data in somewhere I don't remember now what it was I've had this a few years so my memory is not that good but um, We'll try a couple of discs. I've got a big pack of discs here that I bought off a guy who was selling all this retro retro stuff. He had been a, an avid Commodore user back in the day. Back in the olden days. And um, he used to subscribe to the, Com the Commodore magazines and things. And he had um, bloody tons of discs. I didn't buy them all, I just bought a select few. Oh, Defender of the Crown. Well, we've got to try that. Boot other side, load other side, defend of the crown. This takes forever to load, but it's a good test to see if it works. Let, uh, load, load, uh, whatever you like. Load something. Well, it's finished. That's a fast loader, that is. Oh, oh for God's sake. L's giving me some grief on this thing. Hey. That was a pointless exercise. Uh, what have we got? Crown, crown, call, 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 onus rift, coronus rift, Activision. Is that the Lucas Arts thing? I think it is. Stardust Production Magic Two. No idea what they are. It's magic. A crystal software game. Odus. Odus? Eclipse. Don't know what that is. Battle chess. Oh yeah. <laughs> Battle chess. Chaos with a K. Nice disc. Sports Spectacular. Ice guys, 1997. 1997. Really? Coming on 64 stop production in 1994. Oh. Oh. Bloody keyboards. Um, so yeah, so it's a full standard um, sort of mildly expanded Commodore 64 if you like. Comes with a built-in disk drive. Comes with its own CRT. Great, really. Oh, yeah. What's that doing? Well, I suspect the disk drive needs cleaning. I mean, you can put two drives in there. What I might do tomorrow is um, put the Wi-Fi module in here. And we'll connect to a few BBSs and things and have a little play. Uh, it's getting a bit late now, so I'm, I'm not going to do too much more tonight. That's crashed. The, uh, the disk drive's playing up, or the discs are. They're getting quite old. Nice to see something work. We have a Goodman's Bluetooth audio cable. Really? Never seen that before in my life. Pipe Mania. With a booklet. Robocop. Oh, we've got a Robocop. Ocean Software, 1988. Everybody knows Robocop. Everybody knows Ocean. The film license that they got for Peanuts. Oop. Oop. File not found error. I'm surprised all that noise you're making. This is a beauty of uh, uh -oh, an old dirty C64 disk drive. Oh my god. File not found. 
The disk drive desperately needs cleaning. The disks don't look in bad condition at all. Total recall. Don't think I've ever played that. But anyway, um, yeah, it's flashing a light at me. The Commodore SX64 version 2, 30719 basic bytes free, 64K. What a wonderful machine. I'll show you around it tomorrow and we'll, we might pop a cover off and have a little look. But there is some, there are some Apple machines on it I'd quite like to look at. As well as a Dreamcast and various other things. But that'll do for tonight. I hope it's not bored you too much. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. I'm as restless as a willow in a windstorm. I'm as jumpy as a puppet on a string.